I'm Bianca. And I'm Grant. And, and this, this is, is the Lake, Lake House Project. Alright, so today we're going to start to raise up this floor. I haven't really done this before and I don't think it's that common of a construction method. Uh, but what I plan to do is basically build a wall as it would look vertically and then I'm going to tilt it down and it basically will just run horizontally along the floor and then we'll add some subfloor on top of that. That's the plan, we'll see how it goes. Let's get started. So the difference in floor height between the upper and lower floor is about 5 inches and so I bought some 2x6s which are nominally 5.5 inches so I had just enough wood to kind of rip down to get to that 5 inch mark uh, and this will be the main structure we used to raise up the floor. I then cut out this hole as there was an outlet in the way for this particular board uh, and as I was installing these I was trying to get them as level as I could as well as flush with the bottom of the old subfloor. And for this project, I actually picked up this electric DeWalt nail gun, which was an absolute lifesaver. No hassle with an air compressor or hoses. I definitely recommend this product. And I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. All right, so now that I got that board in on the left or your right, I'm now gonna mark out 16 inches on center, going this direction. All right, so I laid out my next floorboard, or whatever you wanna call it, I guess joist, whatever. And as you can see, it's laid flat on the floor and it's about a half inch above the line over here, except down there it's fine. So again, the floor is uneven, so I gotta have to deal with this. So what I do is I mark where I want it to be and then I go about six feet down and mark a line down there. Then I pull a chalk line between those two points and snap it. And then that way I can unfortunately do a taper cut, which I didn't want to have to do. Uh, but I'll just do my circular saw and connect those two points, one on the outer edge and one right here. And then that'll taper the board just enough. Let's get to it. And if you can't get enough of this DIY content, we also have a TikTok and Instagram at Golden Key Design for more real-time updates. Now back to the video. Since these are 13 or 14 feet in length, it's good to add some cross bracing in the middle to keep them from wobbling you know, back and forth. So that's what I'm doing here. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like, as it definitely helps the YouTube algorithm and allows me to reach a bigger audience. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe. We have new DIY videos every single Saturday, and you'll be able to stay up to date on our progress on this lake house. We got lots more content coming your way, so stay tuned. So here you can see on this entire end, I put shims underneath all the boards, and this is so that it can be perfectly level with the top of the other board. So right here, it's perfectly flush. Now when I nail it, it doesn't depress the board at all. So let's get to nailing. All right, so now I'm installing this board against the wall. I made sure to not install this one, although I did, and I just took it back up so that I could fit my nail gun in here. And then once this board and this board are done, then you can install this board here. So the one on the left is already fully secured to the wall, and now I'm securing this piece here. And as you can see, it's maybe it's hard to tell, but there's a gap between the level of the board. And the level's running from this board to the ledger board. And so what I'm gonna do is just raise this board up until it touches the level, and I can use these shims to help me. And then you can just check with your finger right here, and that looks nice and flush. So I'm gonna nail this. Now I'll nail in this board in the middle. All right, so now that I have all of the joists nailed and installed and cut to the right size, I'm going back through with some shims, uh, and so I'm just looking along the floor, seeing where the board is touching and where it's not. The places where it's not, I'm adding a shim. Don't push it too far in because then the board will just be raised too high because these shims are pretty strong so they can just keep raising up the board. So I just put it in and once I start feeling any uh, amount of pressure, I stop. 
And then I come back with, usually for each board, I'm putting in three screws that are going through the shins, through the board, and into the floor joist beneath the, the subfloor. And then that really locks the joist in. And then I'll come back and add some of these blocking pieces in the middle of each board to give it some extra support since these are about 13 feet long. So let's do it. One for basically three shims per joist, three screws per joist, and then one blocking piece. After that, we're done for the day. are like super solid you know they're not going anywhere even when you want to push them in this direction hey everyone so we finally finished this first section of raising up the floor i did my best to make it level but it still isn't perfect uh, i was able to take my level so this is a four foot level and you can span it across three to four joists so if i go here and i try and push it back and forth it doesn't move which means these three are perfectly in line However, if I come to this side and do the same thing, this middle joist here is a little too high. And I was able to check the whole floor. This joist just needs to be shaved down a little bit right here. But being that it's already installed, I bought an uh, electric hand planer. But that doesn't come until tomorrow, but that should be an easy fix. Just run it across there until it becomes level with the two boards on either side of it. And then that way when we put the subfloor on top of it, everything will lay light everything will lay nice and flat and there won't be any gaps. So because that doesn't arrive until Wednesday and all the other materials to finish the floor don't arrive until Wednesday, which is tomorrow, I'm gonna start tearing out the ceiling because this eventually needs to be done and might as well do it now. We're going to be taking out this light fixture and that light fixture and then probably eventually we'll be putting in like eight, like a two by four grid of just uh, recessed lights in the ceiling. Uh, but the first step is obviously we have to take it down and the reason is because it's also a popcorn ceiling so rather than trying to fix the popcorn ceiling and also putting in new lights just makes everything easier if we just do it from the from scratch we're just going to take the whole thing down so it's going to get a little bit messy here but don't have any anything else to do until these stuff this stuff comes so let's get to it so the first step is going to be scoring where the drywall connects to the wall so that when I take it out, I don't take any of the wall drywall with it. All right, so I just cut the power to this light. So I know that there's no electricity running through these wires. I'm gonna cut these two wires so I can detach the light and then cover up the ends with some electrical tape since I don't have any morettes on me right now. Uh, but that should be fine. This is so that when I take up the drywall, it doesn't get damaged or fall or break it. Like that. Round and round we go. It's about to fall. I don't know how this is. I hope I can support it. Oh, wow, it was right there. <laughs> there we go. As you may be able to tell, drywall demo creates a lot of dust, so make sure you wear a mask as well as some eye protection if you can. In order to fit more in the garage, I take these big pieces and break them down with the sledgehammer to, uh, you know, get less airspace and try and get this full. And because I scored this ceiling joint earlier with my utility knife, you can see that when I break the drywall off, there's a nice clean line against the wall. And as you can see, this house was made so long ago that they used nails to hang the drywall instead of screws, and there's probably about a thousand left over that we're gonna have to pull out later. And I also made a huge mess. All right, so I was able to sweep up all of that popcorn dust. It's hard to get in between here, but 
was able to do it for the most part. And yeah, we still have to take out all these nails. That'll create a little bit more dust, but not nearly as much as this. And here it all is. It's about 40 pounds of popcorn dust. Anyone hungry? And that wraps up part one of Raising the Floor. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And stay tuned next week because we got more content coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week.